Hello folks, I am off to the coffee shop with a little driving ramble. Um, hopefully I have the phone uh, or the camera, I'm using my digital camera, kind of up on the, the sun visor. I can't, the, um, the mini doesn't really allow me to use my little clip. I have this little clip that I usually use and the, I think I've talked about this before, but the, the air intake, they're, they're rounded so it, it can't really clip on. Anyways, um, I thought I'd do a little video on a, a few mistakes, I think three mistakes that I've made in watch collecting. Um, and I think these are somewhat common mistakes that people make, but they might not realize it when they're getting started. So c consider these, these are mistakes that I've made that hopefully might, I don't know if warn you is the right the right way of putting it, or just something to keep in mind. Um, speaking of which, I am by, I'm wearing the beautiful Breitling Blackbird today. Um, so mistake number one is buying too many watches too close together. Um, there's no strict rule about this I've found but certainly buying two watches within a week of each other is too soon. Um, I would say at least a month, preferably two or three months apart, if not longer. It takes a while to really get to know a watch. It takes a while to acclimate to its new look and feeling. And um, when you buy too many watches at once, I mean, it's like getting too many presents at Christmas. Have you ever watched, if those of you who have kids, you know how this works. I, I remember the days when my daughters would open every present as if it was like special and amazing rather than, oh, there's some turkeys, wild turkeys, about six or seven of them. Um, they would, they would open their presents and it was, they were so excited. And then we'd say, oh, here's another one. And they wouldn't even, oh, really, there's more? Um, they were, weren't jaded and gradually actually they're both pretty good about it. They're pretty they get it They're excited about the whole process, but there's still inevitably, you know, there ends up being um, I, I Don't know what the term is for but when you you're so used to a lot of things that you I mean you become jaded This is what happens to wealthy people. They're just so used to this high level of having whatever they want So something new is not as special anymore Um so if you buy too many watches at once, you're just not gonna appreciate them as much. I mean, I think in a way, again, this isn't an exact formula, but let's say you have 10 excitement points for your new watch. And if you get two watches, it's gonna be split up between the two. You're not gonna have 10 for each one. Now you might not have five for each. It might be more like you, you get 15 points between the two. Um, and but it's still reduced, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, it's not a, um, you know, an increase that's even, like there's only so much excitement you can have for your new watches. And the more new watches you get, the more, um, the, the less excitement you're gonna have for each individual one. So yeah, buy, I, I really recommend being careful about this. When you buy a new watch, get your new watch and enjoy it and don't think about what is next don't like immediately and and you know it's really tempting in this consumerist world this <laughs> I, I don't know who was talking about this but it's almost like you when you buy something the most exciting part of it is not even having it. it's when you get the package in the mail and when you're just opening the package it's like just before seeing it that's the most excited you'll ever be about that new watch <laughs> and then you open it and, it and inevitably there's some kind of letdown and then depending upon how nice the watch is how much you like it then it kind of comes back again you know what i mean you you you, you either really love it or the, or it never fulfills its promise so yeah the let's see the other one i, I wrote these down um so related to that is is buying a watch on a whim. Um, what I mean by this, or buying it too soon after first discovering it. So if if I recommend 
not buying watches at least within a month of each other, if not two or three months. I would certainly recommend um, giving it a little while, at least a couple weeks, after you first see a watch and decide you like it a lot, give it some time. I've seen watches where I felt like, wow, I just must have this watch. And then the next day I was like, oh, okay. I don't, I, you know, looking at it with fresh eyes, it didn't quite grab me as much. Um, now I've made the mistake of seeing something and immediately just buying it. So that's something to look out for. Um, buying on a whim, buying too quickly after first seeing it. I would definitely, you know, when you first find a watch that you really like, you know, revisit it, check it out. If possible, go actually look at it and touch it. It's not always possible, right? It's not always possible to do that. Um, if you're like me, the nearest watch, the nearest jeweler that has a good selection of watches, you know, that has a good selection of Omegas, Breitlings, etc., um, is about 40 minutes away. I, all, the, all the towns around me are small and they don't have, there, there's like a pawn shop that usually has a Rolex or two, um, or a jewelry shop. And there's another jeweler down the road, like 15 minutes away that has, I think they have like citizen watches. But to get that really nice selection, I have to drive like 35, 40 minutes. Um, it's called living in the boondocks, my friends. It's, it's like just be, there's a, that, that it takes me about 30 minutes to get the nearest Whole Foods. Um, talk, talk about first world, first world liberal problems, having to drive 30 minutes to get to Whole Foods. Um, so yeah, the whim. Check. Give it some time, research it. If, it. if it's the right watch for you, it's gonna stay steady. If anything, the desire is going to grow. You know, when I, I, I had a whole funny dile dilemma with this watch, I've wanted this watch for a long time. This is, I always thought it was way out of reach. It was sort of like my favorite Breitling. And Breitling was sort of a brand that I didn't really think I'd ever own. Um, and so, they, you know, usually, I, I got this for, for the best I've ever seen it as far as price-wise. Price and, um, you know, this guy was selling it and I was just, you know, I, I made an offer and eventually he accepted it and then I pulled back. I was just like, oh man, I can't, I need to, I need to sell some watches first. But then, I, but then the next three days was total obsession about this watch. I was just thinking about it all the time. And I was thinking about how I'll never find this deal again, you know? Usually this goes for, for what I paid for, I probably, it usually goes for about 20% more than what I paid for it. Um, and, or at least 10% more. So then I contacted him back and he was definitely a little irritated and, you know, but we made, we made the deal. But it was, you know, it was the type of thing that like, <laughs> You know, for better or worse, I almost had to buy it. It was almost like I was too obsessed with it to not buy it. I couldn't get over the obsession. But that's but in terms of this, like if we're saying that this is this is a addiction that we're allowing ourselves, that I think is a good sign, quote unquote, in terms of when to purchase a watch. When you just can't stop thinking about it. when you're lying in bed and you're having it's 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 a, a wet, uh, watch lexicon term, the watch succubus that it's invading your dream space, your internal mind, your soul, your psyche, and it's sucking your energy and it wants you to um, uh, just say, come to me, come to me, buy me, make love to me. <laughs> All right, so um, finally, the third mistake is, <laughs> ironically enough, buying on credit, um, financing. Um, I, you know, I'm not opposed to this Completely. I think there's times to buy by finance and I kind this was kind of a time to do it and I did pay for this I did I do have the cash and savings, but I just didn't you know I, I didn't want to I keep my watch purchasing separate. It's a whole other thing my PayPal account uh, My wife doesn't know how much is in there. I buy and sell with my PayPal account. It's its own little microcosm economic microcosm so I feel like 
I have to pay it off. If I, if I get a balance, I have to pay it off with watch purchases or, or sales. And anything I get from watch sales, when, it's, when there's not a balance, I can use for watch purposes. Sometimes I actually put it in savings. Um, but yeah, I, I generally think it's not a good idea. PayPal allows you to buy things and get no interest for six months. And then after that, after the six months, they, they, they keep track of how much interest you've accrued and you actually can see it now. And then they, char they charge you that whole amount of interest after that six months. So you, you have to be really disciplined. If you're okay with that, and if you're very disciplined, meaning you don't stack up the watches and the huge, you know, thousands upon thousands of dollars, that's a bad idea. But if you have like one watch you purchased and you know, you, you know you're gonna sell some watches to pay it off, you have a plan and you can do it in like six months or so, you know, why not? I think that's fine. I still think it's not a good idea in general. Um, I wouldn't say ever because there are, I mean, sometimes there's a watch that you're never gonna find that deal. You know what I mean? I just saw a uh, Marine Master 300 meter Seiko that I actually, it, it, it showed up on Watch Recon on Watch You Seek. Um, and I emailed the guy 28 minutes after he posted it. He was selling it for 1100, which is a great deal as it is, but it had a Sapphire Crystal upgrade. Um, so it was extra nice in that regard. So I, I just said, I want it. I mean, I didn't even make an offer. I just said, I'll take it if, if it's still available. And he said, sorry. It's pending funds. So, so he sold it. Somebody beat me to it. And that's the problem with buying on a watch you seek is that you can't, uh, or watch recon. People really check it frequently. It's, you know, you'll get great deals, but they go very fast. I bought my Oris Divers date like that. I was one of three people that contacted this guy and I was the first one to, to send an offer. So I got it for a really good deal. Um, and yeah, so it, anyway, so, so financing is the third mistake that I've made. Um, I, again, there, the, every rule has, has exceptions. You know, every, every rule can be broken. There's a time and place to break it. Um, and, you know, but, but I think these are generally things to be avoided. So the three mistakes are buying too many watches too close together. Um, buying a watch too quickly or on a whim after first seeing it and financing all right i'm going to leave it at that for now and i think these are somewhat common mistakes that people make but they might not realize it when they're getting started so c consider these these are mistakes that i've made that hopefully might i don't know if warn you is the right the right way of putting it or just something to keep in mind um Speaking of which, I am by, I'm wearing the too soon. Um, I would say at least a month, preferably two or three months apart, if not longer. It takes a while to really get to know a watch. It takes a while to acclimate to its new look and feeling. And um, when you buy too many watches at once, I mean, it's like getting too many presents at Christmas. Have you? Hello folks. I am off to the coffee shop with a little driving ramble. Um, hopefully, I have the phone uh, or the camera, I'm using my digital camera, kind of up on the, the sun visor. I can't, the, um, the mini doesn't really allow me to use my little clip. I have this little clip that I usually use. And the, I think I've talked about this before, but the, the air intake, they're, they're rounded, so it, they can't really clip on. Anyways, um, I thought I'd do a little video on a, a few mistakes, I think three mistakes that I've made in watch collecting. Um, beautiful Breitling Blackbird today. Um, so mistake number one is buying too many watches too close together. Um, there's no strict rule about this I've found, but certainly buying two watches within a week of each other is too.